start recording too. All right, we, uh, so obviously we're having some, my math lab issues, which is really weird, but um, so we extended the deadline another day. Sounds like things are working. Is that true for everybody? Yeah, for me. Okay, well, we'll verify um, as we're doing these. If you've got a specific one from your online homework, go ahead and, and find those and shoot them to me through Ask My Instructor. But right now we're going to go through the discussion from last week, which was this inference proportions. And so this is a continuation of what you had done before. We've always bought here with the discussion. So it's, it's really your first application of confidence intervals and proportions. So they do have you do this formula here, which is in the bottom of your page one of your formula sheet to find the sample size required. So think of it this way, whenever you do, when you hear like a presidential poll or some, some kind of survey, it usually says that it's a margin of error. Like we think it's between, you know, it's 38% plus or minus 3%. Well, that means they had to test a certain number of people. This is the formula you use to figure out how many people would you need to test to make that determination. Um, so Z sub alpha over two is essentially the, the Z score that goes with the level of confidence. So if it's a alpha level is 0.05, which is a 95% confidence interval, then Z sub alpha over two is going to be 1.96. And that's right on the top of your formula sheet there. Um, and then E is your error. And I think it said 0.03. So you take 1.96 divided by 0.03, get that number, square it. And then you take it times P hat, Q hat. Now P hat and Q are your sample proportions. So um, this doesn't get too critical. Like if you didn't even know what the sample proportion was, you could just use 0 0.5. 0 0.5 and then Q is one minus P, which is point. So you just go 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. But since we have a sample proportion, um, and if you look down, that data is right here, the combined arrest records. Um, if you download that, it's about 24%. So P hat is a like, um, 0.24. If you used even one of your uh, sample proportions when you did your arrest records before, that would be appropriate. So this is a tool to use to, to get a general idea how big of a sample do we need to have this level of accuracy. Um, so I think most people do fine on this. Does anybody have any questions on that, that part three? Nope, that makes sense. Okay, I, I think most people get this far. Um, the Z-score, uh, the P hat is the proportion from this combined arrest record data. So that's your sample proportion. And can anybody tell me, did anybody do this yet? Did, what did they find for the population proportion? What is the population proportion of black and African Americans in Polk County? You may find that on Google or something. I don't know if anybody, or you can chat it in if you'd like. So, yeah, okay, good. So I usually see an answer between like, like that one was 6.47% or 7.1% or something. It's, it's around six or 7% based on which um, data you, you look for, what sample data you find. So we are assuming the population proportion P here is like about 0.07 or something. So you take your sample proportion, which I think is around 24% and your population proportion, which is like 7%, and then you divide it by this, and the bottom is, this, is what we call the standard error. And with proportions, we just take the square root of P times Q over N. So that's gonna be what, 0 0.07, 0 0.93, and N is like 400 and some. And this gives us a Z-score, and it's, it's huge. It's like, I don't know, based on what numbers you find, it could be like 18 or 20, some crazy high Z-score. So what, what do you guys think? If I get a really big Z-score, what does that mean? like 0.999 on like your z so that would be and remember i'm looking for the tail so what's the proportion of getting that result by random chance is it common or rare so what i'm really asking is if the population proportion is seven percent what's the chance that i could just get a random sample of 400 some and it would be 24 percent black or african American? The answer is almost impossible for that to happen by random chance. Now, could it happen? 
it could, but then it would make us question, is that a valid sample, or is something else going on with this group compared to the population? Well, obviously, the proportion is like over triple than, than higher than normal. So we get a p-value that is super small. So if you have a, a small p-value, um, then you should reject the null hypothesis. That's the probability of getting that result by random chance. So most people get it. They find the z-score, p-value is super small. I'm thinking about actually chopping this part off because this critical value method is outdated, I think. It doesn't really, nobody really does this anymore. That's like saying, oh, I got to be over 1.96 for my z-score. Okay, whatever. We're more concerned with the p-value, the probability of that result happening. And then, then it asks you to do, essentially make a decision the p-value, and then this part is just finding the confidence interval. So if you look at your formula sheet, confidence interval proportion, it says p hat plus or minus z sub alpha over two square root. So this is the, really the same formulas over here. This is the error. This is the z score, how many standard deviations, and this is your sample where you start from. So it's like 24% plus or minus, because there's a plus, there's a minus. It's just more explicit this way. And then um, 1.96, and then whatever you're, the... 0.24.76, and then ends like 400 some. So everybody finds a pretty a confidence interval that's centered around 20 some percent. Obviously, 7% is not in that interval. And that backs up the fact that there's definitely something uh, different about this group of data compared to the population. Um, so I, that's kind of it. It's just, could you do all of this on StatCrunch? The answer is yes. Uh, do you want me to show you how to do that? Sure. Yeah, that would be. I mean, a lot of you have probably done this on StatCrunch, but let me go ahead and um, let me see. Just to make sure that I'm not lost. So yeah. the P hat are um, the sample data proportion. Per yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's the sample. Okay. And P is your population proportion. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to get to stack crunch here. I wish there was a more direct link, but there isn't. All right, stack crunch. Let's see if it lets me in here. All right. So if I just wanted to actually do all of those calculations with um, just, I can just go up here to stat. And then I can just go right to proportion stats, one sample with summary. Have you seen that? Now, if you had the raw data, you could do it as well, but that wouldn't help you too much because they wouldn't know what categorical data you were looking for. Um, but obviously, you can sort your data and just count how many are in each one. So if anybody did this, does anybody remember how many it was out of how many it was uh, looking at the data? I was, I'm just going to guess. I'm going to say it's like 115 out of, I don't know, 420. I'm just going to guess, okay? And so we just do a 95% confidence interval and hit compute. And there it is. So we can say we're 95% confident the true proportion is between 23 and 31%. Um, if we want to do a z-score or hypothesis test, we just have to click hypothesis test. And P was the population proportion. And what was that? About 0 0.071, let's say. And uh, then we hit compute. And you get a z-score here of like 16 of that. So in the p-value, it's essentially 0. So there, obviously, you can do pretty much all these with stack crunch as well. And I encourage you to kind of know both. But you you can definitely just do it that way. Where did you get the um, zero point seven or whatever it was for the? Oh, that was the population the proportion. That was like if you, whatever you Googled. Okay. That's your yeah. So I think a lot of people that I've noticed it's that's the one they find online is about a, it's a little over seven percent black and African American in in uh, Polk County. But I think somebody else had 0.06. Whatever your population proportion is, that's that's your null hypothesis. 
And then your alternative is that the proportion is not the same as the population. And that's what we find here because the sample proportion, I just guessed, I just made it 27%. I, I don't know the exact numbers, but so is, is the point zero seven from like question one? Yep, because P is your population proportion. Okay. P hat is your sample proportion. Right there. What's interesting is we we started this discussion board like three or four, three years ago, uh, way way before Black Lives Matter. Let's put it that way. We had we were doing this discussion. One of our uh, urban campus professors um, authored it. So does that help everybody with the, the discussion? Kind of at least get a good start on that and know, you know, at least submit something by tomorrow and then I can give you some feedback if something is weird. Yeah, that helped me a lot. Thank you. Yes, it did. Yeah, I, was, yeah it's, I think if I saw errors, it's usually somebody used like, instead of using the sample proportion for the confidence interval, they would use the population proportion. Like oh you got you're 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 going out and finding a sample to make an inference to the population so you have to start where wherever your sample is and then go from there. Um, really, all you're doing is verifying results typically with a confidence interval. But sometimes you're not like you're going out and doing a poll. How many people are going to vote for this candidate? I have no idea. You go out and do it and you make a confidence interval and that's completely fine. Um, that's that's different than a, a hypothesis test. Now, if you said, well, last time they it was 30%, and now we went and did a sample, it was 35%, then now you can analyze it. Is that statistically significantly greater or not? You can find the z-score then. And that's a hypothesis thing. So Allie, are you able to join us with this with your cell phone? Can you chat that in? Or, or do you need to? I don't. I don't know if you wanted to talk. Um, if you want, it's up here in the upper left hand. It says use your phone for audio, and then you can just use your cell phone and join the audio that way if you want. So, all right. So, how about online homework? Did anybody send me one yet? Oh, I got one. Bryn send me one. I think, I think I know which ones you're talking about. I'm curious. I, I think I know, but when I look at it, I'll, I'll know almost immediately what type of question. Uh, okay, it says, I'll go ahead and put this over here. All right, can everybody see that? Can you, get, can you guys see that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it says uh, refer to the accompanying data set and construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the mean pulse rate of adult females. Then do the same for adult males. Compare the results. So if I click this, um, this little box here, open in Stack Crunch. Hopefully, let me do that. Yeah. So I did that. So now it's in Stack Crunch. So now we want to find the mean and standard deviation for these. So if you want to do that, you go stat, summary stats, columns, and you can actually find the mean and standard deviation and use the formula, right? Because that's all you really need. You just need uh, mean. What question? Uh, this one, oh, I'm sorry. This one was Bryn sent me uh, 72 number seven. five. Okay. 72 number five. Thank you for asking that. So you can was, use it. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I just it looked familiar. I had been struggling on that one too. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. So you can um, find the mean and standard deviation, and then use your uh, uh, confidence interval for one sample mean, or you can just go right to since we know it's means, it's going to be a T, and we just say one sample. Actually, we have the data, and we'll just do males, we can do males first, do a 95% confidence interval, and bam, there it is. 
So we are 95% confident the mean uh, heart rate of males is between 63.262 and 71.27. Now let's see, what are they asking for first here? They're asking for, is it males? Yeah, oh, uh, females. Females. So let's go ahead and do that one real quick. So for females, I'm going to edit here and let's go with females and do the same thing. So that would be 71.72 to 80.17. How many decimal places? Here? That's over here. That's over here. And round to one decimal place. So it's going to be 71.72. Seven, and the high is going to be 80.2. That's good. Now for men, I'll do that one again. Men was uh, 63.6 and 71.4. But what's kind of interesting is I think what they want you to do is say, simply, do these intervals overlap? Could they overlap? Could they actually be the same? And that's when we're talking about the difference of two means. I don't think that that isn't in this section. That's in a later section. But we could actually, while we're here, it says the confidence intervals do not overlap. So there does seem to be a significantly higher one. Um, they do not overlap. So there seems to be higher for females. Ooh. They do overlap? Um, I don't overlap. Because mine goes to 71.4 and that starts at 71.7. Oh, there is a significant difference. Okay, sorry. Okay, there is a significant difference. I can read the whole sentence. There we go. Um, so let's go ahead and do this with, like we would do in chapter nine, difference of two means. So that one would be stat, T stats, two samples, and actually we have the raw data. If you had the summary, that'd be fine with data. So males, females, our null hypothesis is they're the same, or let's just do a confidence interval first. Do that and hit compute. So we're 95% confident the true mean difference is between essentially negative 14 and negative 3 beats per minute. Notice zero is not in there, which indicates there probably is a statistically significant difference between the two. If we did a hypothesis test, we assume they're the equal, and then the alternative is that they're either greater than, less than, or not equal. Let's just do a two-tailed test, not equal. And the p-value there is 0.00, the z-score is negative 2.98. So the probability, uh, essentially, that they would be the same is super low, that, they're, that they could be the same. Now, they could be, and we can make an error, but the probability of us making an error and rejecting the null hypothesis here would be super low. So this, this verifies that there is a statistically significant difference between heart rates between males and females. Do you want me to go back through any of that again? Anything you're wondering about? Now, what if you didn't have the raw data? Then you can just go um, summary. You can just go, like they just give you the data, the mean and standard deviation and sample size. You just go T stats, two sample with summary, and then you just say, there's the mean, there's the standard deviation, there's how many, boom, 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 and it's the same thing. Cool? Yep. And you want, did that help at all as far as how to, um, I guess, confidence intervals with one sample and also two samples and also hypothesis testing with one or two samples of means? So really, this, we have one more chap, one more chapter, or yeah, essentially one more chapter to go, one more section on deviations. We're going to do analysis of deviations. So the first week was proportions, then means, then deviations. So pretty much that's all I can test you over is confidence intervals and hypothesis tests for means, proportions, and deviations. And then your next thing is that one sample or two sample, or in this case, 
we get into paired data. Like you test the same people twice is what we call paired data, like a before and after. Or husbands and wives are paired data, things like that. Very good. Um, do you have another one anybody's working on right now? Um, what about like number six on 7.2? Okay, you want to hit that one? Is it similar to this one or not? Yeah, a little bit. It's just not in like a chart type thing on. I don't know if you can still I'm, send I'm going to call out. I think Allie is she texting me. I'm going to call her just to make sure she knows she can get in with her phone. There it is. Thanks, Brent. I'll, I'll click on that one. Okay, so this is a sample size required. Do you know where that formula is at? I think I think that was Allie. That's like the the z divided by two times the standard deviation over e, and then take that squared. Yep, that's it. So really, you just got those two formulas: one for uh, sample size required for proportions, and one for means, right? Yep. There, and I don't test over that. Don't that will not be in your exam. You just have to do a few homework problems on that. How's that sound? Yep, sounds good. So that's what this one is. You just plug it in that formula, and you're good. Okay. What formula was that? Uh, here, I'll pull up the, I'm just going to pull up the formula sheet. I'm assuming you all have this handy. Um, let's see here. I'll just... It's in pretty much, it's in all, every folder for chapters seven through nine. It's, uh, it says the 2019 formula sheet. I'll go ahead and just download it and put it over here. There we go. That one. And then here's your formulas for sample size required. Sample size needed. So Z, sigma, E, and, and uh, multiply those, divided by E, and then square that result. And this is the one we had before. So if you look at this formula sheet, you've already studied confidence interval for one proportion, confidence interval for two proportions. That's chapter nine, I think section nine one. And then like what we just did, confidence interval for one mean, confidence interval for the difference of two means. And then the last section in chapter eight is or um, paired data, was that chapter nine? Can't remember, uh, chapter nine. And then that's due tonight as well. And then this is the only new formula next week, is this confidence interval for variance. And then the rest of these are for hypothesis testing. There's a z-score, there's a z-score for difference of two, t-score, difference of two means, and then dependent data. And this is the only formula sheet, I think, or the only new formula next week. So Pretty much have got almost everything already. Oh, you'll use F. You'll use the F distribution um, next week as well. So did, did, anybody, did you have another one you wanted me to look at? Not at this moment, isn't it? Okay. But for the same check. one, how do you find the Z and the E? Uh, the E is going to be given to you. That's the error. So in this case, the error is, um, let's see here, standard deviation. Uh, eight IQ points is the error. And what level of confidence do they want? 90%. So do you see right in your formula sheet where it's 90% confidence? Yeah, the 1.645. Very good. Yep, that's what you use for Z. Good job. Let's 
see here. Let me go back to this. I'm going to hit stop sharing for a second. If it's still recording. Yep, it still looks good. All right. I'm not sure what. Oh, Allie didn't. I don't know. Maybe Allie had to go somewhere. I actually called her and she didn't answer either. So, um, so how about Cheyenne? How about you? Do you have something you're working on right now, or are you just kind of getting in your homework? Um, still kind of doing the homework. Was there anything for um? I know, like for eight three, there's a part in Sat Crunch to um help test a hypothesis, and then yep. for nine to nine three. Are there is there something in like Stat Crunch to help with that or to help test those? Because I just seemed to yeah. I'll just I'll show you exactly where those videos are. Um, so if you go, okay. yeah. So there, there's like I showed you how to do that one um, already with that. But uh, here we go with means right here. So there we go. Um, let's see here. Computing p values and testing you Stat Crunch the right tailed test. That's a good one. Um, here we go. Difference between two means, stat crunch, um, like that. If if you watch this one, that's like it's only let's see how many minutes is long is that? It's only four and a half minutes. Okay. And I sound younger than. <laughs> this is an old video. <laughs> Let me go over that. I'm curious how old this thing is. I think I'm getting, what year was that? That was 2014. Yeah, I was a lot younger then. I know some of them I've put the, like I've sped them up just because the guy talks kind of slow. So it takes a while to get through them. Well, some of these are, I did the same I, thing. I, this, this is one I've done, <laughs> but, um, so this one, if you look at this, I just show how to find the difference between two, right? T, this is exactly what you do for T stats, right? Sample mean, so standard deviation. Yeah. The fact your screen sharing. I don't know. Oh, I'm not that. sharing my screen. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? There. So on this video, I just kind of this is almost identical to one I walked through from chapter seven there, but this is actually. Nine three, it's the same kind of thing. You got two means, two standard deviations. The question is, are they the same or different? So the null hypothesis is the same. They obviously think this one is supposed to be lower. What are they talking about? Oh, uh, tests. If the tests are proctored or non-proctored, if there's a statistically significant increase in test scores. So the average with proctored is 74, with not proctored is 88. So, and then this just shows how to do it in Stat Crunch. Stat. Uh, I'm back up there. There we go. Stat. Z. Uh, it should be uh, T stats, and then you just type in all those numbers right from the table, and do a confidence interval hypothesis test, and you're good. And so, if you go into Stat Crunch, you should see um, each. Each um, test is right there. It's either proportions or means or T, and that pretty much does everything in this chapter. It's under those two menus. This is a very good example. This little video would show you. Yeah, and I showed it to you before, I guess, too. But um, let's see if there's another one. Yeah, there's another one here, 9 3, paired sample T test and stack crunch. That's another one, good one to watch. Yep, and then there's the mass pairs. So which section are you guys working on then? Are you on same? I'm, I'm in like the seven two eight three range just because that's when Pearson quit on me. So okay, that's why I'm too. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate that happened. Um, unfortunately, I'd say over half the class doesn't touch any homework until the day it's due. These chapters that hurts a lot because there's a lot to do. A lot to learn. These are the hardest chapters. So, um, ideally, you would like start maybe last Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. But I know how it goes. I'm taking a class right now too, and I uh, 
I, I am equally afflicted some weeks. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I'm really ready to go back in person. I'm not loving online. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, I, I'm, I can't imagine when I was your age. I mean, I'm, I'm okay now because I'm old. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's hard. Definitely hard to hold yourself accountable. Yep. Staying on, scheduling yourself to work on stuff and making room for it. And it's just kind of out of sight, out of mind. So, um, fortunately or unfortunately, this is, this seems the way the, the world is moving more towards this and, and your future employers want you to be able to learn like this because it's more efficient, it's more targeted and, uh, it's cheaper them instead of sending you to a conference they're going to have you sit on webinars and do instructional models online to learn new software or some new policy and i said to do training today for my own job so this is kind of the way things are going um unfortunately if the people who are highly motivated and self-disciplined and can just do those things they will pass the rest of us by very quick <laughs> they're going to just keep going. They're going to wait around for us. Um, yeah, that's, that's just the way it is, I guess. So, well, I guess it's, you're, are you guys both in high school? Yep, I'm a junior. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a good time for you to have your first experience like this um, when it's a little more supported environment, hopefully. I thought I was getting ahead because I, I'm going to DMAC next fall, so I thought I was getting ahead taking some classes, but I took oh, yeah. more subjects all online, and I'm not loving it. Yeah, it's it's so. not easy, especially if you're doing all your other stuff too. Uh, I had my kids took a few online SAC classes, or just not SAC classes, but just classes. And um, you know, if you're if you're already taking a pretty rigorous course load, it, it's quite a bit more. For sure. Well, do you want me to go over something else, or do you feel comfortable to make progress? Um, obviously, if you get stuck on one, just hit Ask My Instructor, and, and usually I can point to the right resource, or you know, just give me a text or a phone call. Um, or if you want to do this tomorrow again, we could. Uh, but it looks like you guys are probably both at a spot where you just need to kind of just start cranking on some of that stuff. And but don't be afraid to use Stack Crunch, okay? All right. Thank you. All right. Shane, did you have something else you want to work on? Nope, I'm good. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks for being here. I did record this. I'm going to post it for everybody to watch. So uh, hopefully it'll help everybody with their discussion and a few of these questions as well. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank All you. All right. Talk to you later.